What's up my pre-calc people? Welcome to AP Pre-Calculus Topic 1.5, which is a huge topic, lots of information about complex zeros and polynomials. So in this video, we're simply focusing on how you can determine the degree of a polynomial by looking at an input-output table of numerical values. It's actually pretty easy and not too, too bad, so let's just dive right into it. So to find the degree of a polynomial in its analytic or algebraic form, it's pretty simple. You just locate the largest power, that's the degree of your polynomial. However, to find the degree of a polynomial through a table of values, one must examine the successive differences of the output values over equal interval input values. Okay, it might be a little bit confusing, but basically we, if we're going to have a table in front of us, first the input values, the x's, must be equal intervals. 2, 4, 6, 8, 3, 6, 9. You just got to go by the same value. Whatever that value is, it could be 2, it could be 1, it could be 3, but it's got to be equal sized intervals. Then what we could do is we could actually examine the successive differences of the outputs. Okay, now it's going to take an example for me to show this, but give me a second. The degree of the polynomial function is equal to the least value n for which the successive differences are constant. So what we're going to do is we're going to count how many times you have to analyze the differences until they become constant. That number is your degree. Let's look at an example so we can see exactly what I'm talking about. So here on the left side, we have a table, and it's going by ones. Two, then one, three, then one to four, then one to five, then one to six. If we don't check that first, we cannot do what I'm about to do. So we definitely have equal interval input values. That's important. Now what we're going to do is we're going to examine the differences. So let's see here. Negative two to 21. What is that a difference of? What am I going up by, right? Well, I'm up going up by 23. So I went up 23. Then from 21 to 76... That's an increase of 55. Then from 76 to 175, that is an increase of 99. Then from 175 to 330, that is an increase of 155. Okay, so my first set of differences were definitely getting bigger, and the, the, the changes were getting bigger, a lot bigger, 23, 55, 99, 55, or 155. So now we got to check the next set of differences. All right. So from 23 to 55, that's a change of what? Well, all we got to do is subtract, and that's a change of 32. So my difference here is a change of 32. Went up 32. Then what about 99 to 55, or, or 55 to 99? What does that change? Well, that's a change of 44. And then finally, 155, or 99 to 155 is a change of 56. Okay, so now we see our second differences are also getting bigger. Let's check our next set of differences. So from 32 to 44, that's a change of 12. And then from 50, or 44 to 56, that is also a change of 12. Okay, so we're going to stop right there because now we got our change to be constant. Once your change is constant, you're going to take, you're going to analyze how many times you had to look at successive differences to see that. So we had to look at one, two, and then it wasn't until that third set of successive differences that we saw that we had a constant change. That means this is a third degree polynomial. All right, not too bad, right? All right, now let's try this next one. So from negative 33 to zero, we went up 33. Okay, cool. From zero to negative three, we went down three. Interesting. Okay, from negative three to negative 42, we went down 39. And then from negative 42 to negative 117, we went down 75. Okay, so that's my first set of differences. Now we have to look at my second set of differences. So from 33 to negative 3, that's a change of down 36. And then from negative 3 to negative 39, that is a change of down 36. And then from negative 39 to negative 75, that is a change of down 36. All right, so how many times did we have to analyze the differences to get a consistent or constant value? One, two, so that makes this a second degree polynomial. Okay, overall, not too, too bad. And let's look at another example here, but the first thing we got to check is for those equal interval inputs. So negative 5 to 0 is plus 5, 0 to 5 is plus 5, 5 to 10 is plus 5, 10 to 15 is plus 5. If you don't have that, you can't check for the degree like I'm teaching you right now. So now we're going to look at our differences. So our first set of differences is going to be plus 2. 
then another plus two, then another plus two, then another plus two. So while it only took me one time to look at the differences to see that I have a constant, so this means I have a first degree polynomial. Now that actually makes sense because the first degree polynomial we all know is a linear function. And that makes sense because linear functions have a rate of change that's constant. So we're going up to, up to, up to, up to. Our initial rate of change is constant, which tells me we have a linear function anyway. So that's how easy it is. You just got to look at those successive differences. And once you get it to be a constant, you're going to stop. And then you're going to count how many times you had to look at the differences to get that. And that is what your degree is. Not too bad. 